Dubai, Gulf Arabic pronunciation, is the most populous city in the United Arab Emirates and the capital of the Emirate of Dubai. Established in the 18th century as a small fishing village, the city grew rapidly in the early 21st century into a cosmopolitan metropolis with a focus on tourism and hospitality. Dubai is one of the world's most popular tourist destinations. It has the second most five-star hotels in the world and the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa. Located in the eastern part of the Arabian Peninsula on the coast of the Persian Gulf, Dubai aims to be the business hub of Western Asia. It is also a major global transport hub for passengers and cargo. Oil revenue helped accelerate the development of the city, which was already a major mercantile hub. A center for regional and international trade, since the early 20th century, Dubai's economy relies on revenues from trade, tourism, aviation, real estate, and financial services. Oil production contributed less than 1% of the Emirates' GDP in 2018. The city has a population of around 2.9 million. From 1929 it was the primary state, and from 1953 the capital of the Trucial States. Chapter 1 – Etymology Many theories have been proposed as to origin of the word Dubai. One theory suggests the word used to be the souk in bar. An Arabic proverb says Daba Dubai, meaning they came with a lot of money. According to Fidel Handhal, a scholar on the UAE's history and culture, the word Dubai may have come from the word Daba, which means to creep, referring to the slow flow of Dubai Creek inland. The poet and scholar Ahmad Muhammad Obaid traces it to the same word, but to its alternative meaning of baby locust, due to the abundance of locusts in the area before settlement. Chapter 2 – History The history of human settlement in the area now defined by the United Arab Emirates is rich and complex, and points to extensive trading links between the civilizations of the Indus Valley and Mesopotamia, but also as far afield as the Levant. Archaeological finds in the Emirate of Dubai, particularly at Al-Ashush, Al-Sufau and the notably rich trove from Saruk al-Hadid show settlement through the Ubad and Hafid periods, the Am al nah and Wadi Souk periods and the Three Iron Ages in the UAE. The area was known to the Sumerians as Magan, and was a source for metallic goods, notably copper and bronze. The area was covered with sand about 5,000 years ago as the coast retreated inland, becoming part of the city's present coastline. Pre Islamic ceramics have been found from the 3rd and 4th centuries. Prior to the introduction of Islam to the area, the people in this region worshipped Bajra. After the spread of Islam in the region, the Umayyad Caliph of the Eastern Islamic world invaded Southeast Arabia and drove out the Sasanians. Excavations by the Dubai Museum in the region of Al Jumeira found several artifacts from the Umayyad period. An early mention of Dubai is in 1095 in the Book of Geography by the Andalusian Arab geographer Abu Abdullah al Bakri. The Venetian pearl merchant Gospero Balbi visited the area in 1580 and mentioned Dubai for its pearling industry. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Establishment of Modern Dubai Dubai is thought to have been established as a fishing village in the early 18th century and was, by 1822, a town of some 700 to 800 members of the Bani Yas tribe and subject to the rule of Sheikh Tanun bin Sheikh but of Abu Dhabi. In 1833, following tribal feuding, members of the Al Bufalasa tribe seceded from Abu Dhabi and established themselves in Dubai. The exodus from Abu Dhabi was led by Obeid bin Said and Moktum bin Butti, who became joint leaders of Dubai until Ubod died in 1836 leaving Mukhtam to establish the Mokhtum dynasty. Dubai signed the General Maritime Treaty of 1820 with the British government along with other trucial states, following the British campaign in 1819 against the Ras al Khaima. This led to the 1853 Perpetual Maritime Truce. Dubai also, like its neighbours on the trucial coast, entered into an exclusivity agreement in which the United Kingdom took responsibility for the Emirates' security in 1892. In 1841, a smallpox epidemic broke out in the Burr Dubai locality, forcing residents to relocate east to Dera. 
In 1896, fire broke out in Dubai, a disastrous occurrence in a town where many family homes were still constructed from Barasti, palm fronds. The conflagration consumed half the houses of Bur Dubai, while the district of Dera was said to have been totally destroyed. The following year, more fires broke out. A female slave was caught in the act of starting one such blaze and was subsequently put to death. In 1901, Mokhtum bin Hashar al Mokhtum established Dubai as a free port with no taxation on imports or exports and also gave merchants parcels of land and guarantees of protection and tolerance. These policies saw a movement of merchants not only directly from Lonja, but also those who had settled in Ras al Khaimah and Sharjah to Dubai. An indicator of the growing importance of the port of Dubai can be gained from the movements of the steamer of the Bombay and Persia Steam Navigation Company, which from 1899 to 1901 paid five visits annually to Dubai. In 1902 the company's vessels made 21 visits to Dubai and from 1904 on, the steamers called fortnightly, in 1906, trading 70,000 tons of cargo. The frequency of these vessels only helped to accelerate Dubai's role as an emerging port and trading hub of preference. Lorimer notes the transfer from Longer bids fair to become complete and permanent, and also that the town had by 1906 supplanted Longer as the chief entrepot of the Trucial State. Stop the great storm of 1908 struck the pearling boats of Dubai and the coastal emirates towards the end of the pearling season that year, resulting in the loss of a dozen boats and over 100 men. The disaster was a major setback for Dubai, with many families losing their breadwinner and merchants facing financial ruin. These losses came at a time when the tribes of the interior were also experiencing poverty. In a letter to the Sultan of Muscat in 1911, Butty laments misery and poverty are raging among them, with the result that they are struggling, looting and killing among themselves. In 1910, in the Hyacinth incident the town was bombarded by HMS Hyacinth, with the loss of 37 killed. Chapter 2 Section 2, Pre-Oil Dubai Dubai's geographical proximity to Iran made it an important trade location. The town of Dubai was an important port of call for foreign tradesmen, chiefly those from Iran, many of whom eventually settled in the town. By the beginning of the 20th century, it was an important port. At that time, Dubai consisted of the town of Dubai and the nearby village of Jumeirah, a collection of some 45 Arish huts. Dubai was known for its pearl exports until the 1930s, the pearl trade was damaged irreparably by the 1929 Great Depression, and the innovation of cultured pearls. With the collapse of the pearling industry, Dubai fell into a deep depression and many residents lived in poverty or migrated to other parts of the Persian Gulf. In the early days since its inception, Dubai was constantly at odds with Abu Dhabi. In 1947, a border dispute between Dubai and Abu Dhabi on the northern sector of their mutual border escalated into war. Arbitration by the British government resulted in a cessation of hostilities. Despite a lack of oil, Dubai's ruler from 1958, Sheikh Rashid bin Said al Mokhtum, used revenue from trading activities to build infrastructure. Private companies were established to build and operate infrastructure, including electricity, telephone services, and both the ports and airport operators. An airport of sorts was established in Dubai in the 1950s and, in 1959, the Emirates' first hotel, the Airlines Hotel, was constructed. This was followed by the Ambassador and Carlton Hotels in 1968. Sheikh Rashid commissioned John Harris from Halcro, a British architecture firm, to create the city's first master plan in 1959. Harris imagined a Dubai that would rise from the historic centre on Dubai Creek, with an extensive road system, organised zones, and a town centre, all of which could feasibly be built with the limited financial resources at the time. 1959 saw the establishment of Dubai's first telephone company, 51% owned by Yal and 49% by Sheikh Rashid and local businessmen, and in 1961 both the electricity company and telephone company had rolled out operational networks. The water company constructed a pipeline from wells at a wire and a series of storage tanks and, by 1968, 
Dubai had a reliable supply of piped water. On 7 April 1961, the Dubai based MV Dara, a 5,000 ton British flagged vessel that plied the route between Basra, Kuwait, and Bombay, was caught in unusually high winds off Dubai. Early the next morning, in heavy seas off Amal Kun, an explosion tore out the second class cabins and started fires. The captain gave the order to abandon ship, but two lifeboats capsized and a second explosion occurred. A flotilla of small boats from Dubai, Sharjah, Ajman and Amal Kun picked up survivors, but 238 of the 819 persons on board were lost in the disaster. The construction of Dubai's first airport was started on the northern edge of the town in 1959, and the terminal building opened for business in September 1960. The airport was initially serviced by Gulf Aviation but Iran Air commenced services to Shiraz in 1961. In 1962 the British political agent noted that many new houses and blocks of offices and flats are being built. The ruler is determined, against advice to press on with the construction of a jet airport. More and more European and Arab firms are opening up and the future looks bright. In 1962, with expenditure on infrastructure projects already approaching levels some thought imprudent, Sheikh Rashid approached his brother-in-law, the ruler of Qatar, for a loan to build the first bridge crossing Dubai's creek. This crossing was finished in May 1963 and was paid for by a toll levied on the crossing from the Dubai side of the creek to the Dera side. Boak was originally reluctant to start regular flights between Bombay and Dubai, fearing a lack of demand for seats. However, by the time the asphalt runway of Dubai Airport was constructed in 1965, opening Dubai to both regional and long-haul traffic, a number of foreign airlines were competing for landing rights. In 1970 a new airport terminal building was constructed which included Dubai's first duty-free shop stop throughout the 1960s Dubai was the center of a lively gold trade, with 1968 imports of gold at some £56 million. Pounds. This gold was, in the vast majority, re-exported, mainly to customers who took delivery in international waters off India. The import of gold to India had been banned and so the trade was characterized as smuggling, although Dubai's merchants were quick to point out that they were making legal deliveries of gold, and that it was up to the customer where they took it. In 1966, more gold was shipped from London to Dubai than almost anywhere else in the world, at 4 million ounces. Dubai also took delivery of over $15 million worth of watches and over 5 million ounces of silver. The 1967 price of gold was $35 an ounce but its market price in India, was $68 an ounce, a healthy markup. Estimates at the time put the volume of gold imports from Dubai to India at around 75% of the total market. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Oil Era after years of exploration following large finds in neighboring Abu Dhabi, oil was eventually discovered in territorial waters off Dubai in 1966, albeit in far smaller quantities. The first field was named Fatah or Good Fortune. This led to an acceleration of Sheikh Rashid's infrastructure development plans and a construction boom that brought a massive influx of foreign workers, mainly Asians and Middle Easterners. Between 1968 and 1975 the city's population grew by over 300% as part of the infrastructure for pumping and transporting oil from the Fatah field, located offshore of the Jebel Ali area of Dubai, two 500,000-gallon storage tanks were built, known locally as Kazans, by welding them together on the beach and then digging them out and floating them to drop onto the seabed at the Fatah field. These were constructed by the Chicago Bridge and Iron Company, which gave the beach its local name, which was transferred to the Chicago Beach Hotel, which was demolished and replaced by the Jamira Beach Hotel in the late 1990s. The Kazans were an innovative oil storage solution which meant supertankers could moor offshore even in bad weather and avoided the need to pipe oil onshore from Fatah, which is some 60 miles out to sea. Dubai had already embarked on a period of infrastructural development and expansion. Oil revenue, Flowing from 1969 onwards supported a period of growth with Sheikh Rashid embarking on a policy of building infrastructure and a diversified trading economy before the Emirates' limited reserves were depleted. 
Oil accounted for 24% of GDP in 1990, but had reduced to 7% of GDP by 2004. Critically, one of the first major projects Sheikh Rashid embarked upon when oil revenues started to flow was the construction of Port Rashid, a deep water free port constructed by British company Halcro. Originally intended to be a four berth port, it was extended to 16 berths as construction was ongoing. The project was an outstanding success, with shipping queuing to access the new facilities. The port was inaugurated on 5 October 1972, although its berths were each pressed into use as soon as they had been built. Port Rashid was to be further expanded in 1975 to add a further 35 berths before the larger port of Jebel Ali was constructed. Port Rashid was the first of a swath of projects designed to create a modern trading infrastructure, including roads, bridges, schools and hospitals. Chapter 2 Section 4 Reaching the UAE's Act of Union Dubai and the other trucial states had long been a British protectorate where the British government took care of foreign policy and defence, as well as arbitrating between the rulers of the Eastern Gulf, the result of a treaty signed in 1892 named the Exclusive Agreement. This was to change with Prime Minister Harold Wilson's announcement, on 16 January 1968, that all British troops were to be withdrawn from east of Aden. The decision was to pitch the coastal emirates, together with Qatar and Bahrain, into fevered negotiations to fill the political vacuum that the British withdrawal would leave behind. The principle of union was first agreed upon between the ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan al Nahyan, and Sheikh Rashid of Dubai on 18 February 1968 meeting in an encampment at Argob al Sidira, near al Semay, a desert stop between the two emirates. The two agreed to work towards bringing the other emirates, including Qatar and Bahrain, into the Union. Over the next two years, negotiations and meetings of the rulers followed often stormy as a form of Union was thrashed out. The nine-state Union was never to recover from the October 1969 meeting where heavy-handed British intervention resulted in a walkout by Qatar and Ras al Khaimah. Bahrain and Qatar dropped out of talks, leaving six of the seven trucial emirates to agree on union on 18 July 1971. On 2 December 1971, Dubai, together with Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Ajman, Amal Kun and Fujaira joined in the act of union to form the United Arab Emirates. The seventh emirate, Ras al Khaimah, joined the UAE on 10 February 1972, following Iran's annexation of the rack claimed Tuns Islands. In 1973, Dubai joined the other Emirates to adopt a uniform currency, the UAE dirham. In that same year, the prior monetary union with Qatar was dissolved, and the UAE dirham was introduced throughout the Emirates. Chapter 2 Section 5, Modern Dubai During the 1970s, Dubai continued to grow from revenues generated from oil and trade, even as the city saw an influx of immigrants fleeing the Lebanese civil war. Border disputes between the Emirates continued even after the formation of the UAE, it was only in 1979 that a formal compromise was reached that ended disagreements. The Jebel Ali port, a deep water port that allowed larger ships to dock, was established in 1979. The port was not initially a success, so Sheikh Mohammed established the Jafta around the port in 1985 to provide foreign companies unrestricted import of labor and export capital. Dubai Airport and the aviation industry also continued to grow. The Gulf War in early 1991 had a negative financial effect on the city, as depositors withdrew their money and traders withdrew their trade, but subsequently, the city recovered in a changing political climate and thrived. Later in the 1990s, many foreign trading communities, first from Kuwait, during the Gulf War, and later from Bahrain, during the Shia unrest, moved their businesses to Dubai. Dubai provided refueling bases to allied forces at the Jebel Ali Free Zone during the Gulf War, and again during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Large increases in oil prices after the Gulf War encouraged Dubai to continue to focus on free trade and tourism. Chapter 3, Geography 
Dubai is situated on the Persian Gulf coast of the United Arab Emirates and is roughly at sea level. The Emirate of Dubai shares borders with Abu Dhabi in the south, Sharjah in the northeast, and the Sultanate of Oman in the southeast. Hatta, a minor exclave of the Emirate, is surrounded on three sides by Oman and by the Emirates of Ajman and Ras el Khaimah. The Persian Gulf borders the western coast of the Emirate. Dubai is positioned at 25.2697 degrees north 55.3095 degrees east, 25.2697, 55.3095 and covers an area of 1,588 square miles, which represents a significant expansion beyond its initial 1,500 square miles designation due to land reclamation from the sea. Dubai lies directly within the Arabian Desert. However, the topography of Dubai is significantly different from that of the southern portion of the UAE in that much of Dubai's landscape is highlighted by sandy desert patterns, while gravel deserts dominate much of the southern region of the country. The sand consists mostly of crushed shell and coral and is fine, clean and white. East of the city, the salt-crusted coastal plains, known as Sabka, give way to a north-south running line of dunes. Farther east, the dunes grow larger and are tinged red with iron oxide. The flat sandy desert gives way to the western Hojar Mountains, which run alongside Dubai's border with Oman at Hatta. The western Hojar chain has an arid, jagged and shattered landscape, whose mountains rise to about 1,300 meters in some places. Dubai has no natural river bodies or oases, however, Dubai does have a natural inlet, Dubai Creek which has been dredged to make it deep enough for large vessels to pass through. Dubai also has multiple gorges and water holes, which dot the base of the western Al-Hajar Mountains. A vast sea of sand dunes covers much of southern Dubai and eventually leads into the desert known as the Empty Quarter. Seismically, Dubai is in a very stable zone, the nearest seismic fault line, the Zardros Fault, is 200 kilometers from the UAE and is unlikely to have any seismic impact on Dubai. Experts also predict that the possibility of a tsunami in the region is minimal because the Persian Gulf waters are not deep enough to trigger a tsunami. The sandy desert surrounding the city supports wild grasses and occasional date palms. Desert hyacinths grow in the Sabka plains east of the city, while acacia and garf trees grow in the flat plains within the proximity of the western Al-Hajar Mountains. Several indigenous trees, such as the date palm and neem as well as imported trees such as the eucalyptus grow in Dubai's natural parks. The McQueen's Bustard, Striped Hyena, Caracal, Desert Fox, Falcon and Arabian Oryx are common in Dubai's desert. Dubai is on the migration path between Europe, Asia, and Africa, and more than 320 migratory bird species pass through the emirate in spring and autumn. The waters of Dubai are home to more than 300 species of fish, including the hammer. The typical marine life off the Dubai coast includes tropical fish, jellyfish, coral, dugong, dolphins, whales and sharks. Various types of turtles can also be found in the area including the hawksbill turtle and green turtle which are listed as endangered species. Dubai Creek runs northeast-southwest through the city. The eastern section of the city forms the locality of Dera, and is flanked by the Emirate of Sharjah in the east and the town of al in the south. The Dubai International Airport is located south of Dera, while the Palm Dera is located north of Dera in the Persian Gulf. Much of Dubai's real estate boom is concentrated to the west of Dubai Creek, on the Jumeirah coastal belt. Port Rashid, Jebel Ali, Burj Al Arab, the Palm Jumeirah and theme-based free zone clusters such as Business Bay are all located in this section. Dubai is notable for sculpted artificial island complexes including the Palm Islands and the World Archipelago. Chapter 3 Section 1 Climate Dubai has a hot desert climate. Summers in Dubai are extremely hot, prolonged, windy, and humid, with an average high around 40 degrees Celsius and overnight lows around 30 degrees Celsius in the hottest month, August. 
Most days are sunny throughout the year. Winters are comparatively cool, though mild to warm, with an average high of 24 degrees Celsius and overnight lows of 14 degrees Celsius in January, the coolest month. Precipitation, however, has been increasing in the last few decades, with accumulated rain reaching 110.7 mm per year. Dubai summers are also known for the very high humidity level, which can make it very uncomfortable for many with exceptionally high dew points in summer. Heat index values can reach over 60 degrees Celsius at the height of summer. The highest recorded temperature in Dubai is 48.8 degrees Celsius. Chapter 4 Government Dubai has been ruled by the Al Mokhtum family since 1833, the emirate is a constitutional monarchy. Dubai citizens participate in the Electoral College to vote representatives to the Federal National Council of the UAE. The ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Mokhtum, is also the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and member of the Supreme Council of the Union. Dubai appoints eight members in two term periods to the Federal National Council of the UAE, the supreme federal legislative body. The Dubai municipality was established by the then ruler of Dubai, Rashid bin Said Al Mokhtum, in 1954 for purposes of city planning, citizen services, and upkeep of local facilities. DM is chaired by Hamdan bin Rashid Al Mokhtum, deputy ruler of Dubai, and comprises several departments such as the Roads Department, Planning, and Survey Department, Environment and Public Health Department and Financial Affairs Department. In 2001, Dubai Municipality embarked on an e-government project with the intention of providing 40 of its city services through its web portal. Thirteen such services were launched by October 2001, while several other services were expected to be operational in the future. Dubai Municipality is also in charge of the city's sanitation and sewage infrastructure. The UAE has a Minister of Happiness, appointed by Mohammed bin Rashid Al Mokhtum. The UAE has also appointed a Minister of Tolerance to promote tolerance as a fundamental value of the UAE, a country filled with a diverse range of faiths and ethnicities, and also a Minister for Youth Affairs. Chapter 4 Section 1 Law Enforcement the Dubai Police Force, founded in 1956 in the locality of Naif, has law enforcement jurisdiction over the Emirate. The force is under direct command of Mohammed bin Rashid Al Mokhtum. Dubai and Ras Al Khaimah are the only Emirates that do not conform to the federal judicial system of the United Arab Emirates. The Emirates judicial courts comprise the Court of First Instance, the Court of Appeal, and the Court of Cassation. The Court of First Instance consists of the Civil Court, which hears all civil claims, the Criminal Court, which hears claims originating from police complaints, and Sharia Court, which is responsible for matters between Muslims. Non-Muslims do not appear before the Sharia Court. The Court of Cassation is the Supreme Court of the Emirate and hears disputes on matters of law only. Chapter 4 Section 2 Alcohol Laws Alcohol sale and consumption, though legal, is tightly regulated. Adult non-Muslims are allowed to consume alcohol in licensed venues, typically within hotels, or at home with the possession of an alcohol license. Places other than hotels, clubs, and specially designated areas are typically not permitted to sell alcohol. As in other parts of the world, drinking and driving is illegal, with 21 being the legal drinking age in the Emirate of Dubai. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Human Rights Companies in Dubai have in the past been criticized for human rights violations against laborers. Some of the 250,000 foreign laborers in the city have been alleged to live in conditions described by human rights watch as less than humane. The mistreatment of foreign workers was a subject of the difficult-to-make documentary, slaves in Dubai. The Dubai government has denied labor injustices and stated that the watchdog's accusations were misguided. The filmmaker explained in interviews how it was necessary to go undercover to avoid discovery by the authorities, who impose high fines on reporters attempting to document human rights abuses, including the conditions of construction workers. 
Towards the end of March 2006, the government had announced steps to allow construction unions. UAE Labor Minister Ali al Kabi said, laborers will be allowed to form unions. As of 2020, the federal public prosecution has clarified that it is an offense when at least three public employees collectively leave work or one of the duties to achieve an unlawful purpose. Each employee will be punished with not less than six months in prison and not more than a year, as the imprisonment will be for leaving the job or duties that affect the health or the security of the people, or affect other public services of public benefit. Any act of spreading discord among employees will be punishable by imprisonment, and in all cases, foreigners will be deported. Homosexual acts are illegal under UAE law. Freedom of speech in Dubai is limited, with both residents and citizens facing severe sanctions from the government for speaking out against the royal family or local laws and culture. Many of the low paid laborers are victims of human trafficking or forced labor, while some women are even trafficked into the growing sex trade in Dubai, a center of human trafficking and prostitution. Defamation on social media is a punishable offense in Dubai with fines up to half a million dirhams and jail term for up to two years. In January 2020, three Sri Lankan expats were fined 500,000 Emirati dirhams each for posting defamatory Islamophobic Facebook posts. On 3 September 2020, The Guardian reported that hundreds of thousands of migrant workers lost their jobs and were left stranded in Dubai, due to oil price crash and COVID-19. Many were trapped in desperate situations in crowded labor camps with no salary or any other financial source. Those migrant workers had to rely on food donations while they waited for work and to get paid. Chapter 5 Crime Dubai has one of the world's lowest violent crime rates, and in 2019 was ranked the seventh safest city in the world. The Security Industry Regulatory Agency classified the crimes into six categories. These crimes include theft, forced robbery, domestic burglary, fraud, sexual assault and abuse, and criminal damages. As per Gulf News, Dubai police stated that the crime in Dubai was reduced by 15% during 2017. However, the cases of drugs operation increased by 8%. Major General Abdullah Khalifa al Meri, Commander in Chief of Dubai Police, hailed the force which solved 86% of criminal cases. The statistics also indicated that murder crimes dropped from 0.5 in 2016 to 0.3 in 2017 for every 100,000 population, while violent and aggressive crimes in the past five years went from 2.2 crimes per 100,000 and dropped to 1.2 by the end of 2017, pointed out Al Mansouri. General crimes have decreased since 2013, registering around 0.2 by the end of 2017. Robberies went from 3.8 in 2013 to 2.1 by the end of last year, while kidnapping cases also dropped from 0.2 in 2013 to 0.1 in 2017. Vehicle thefts in 2013 were 3.8 per 100,000 population and fell to 1.7 in 2017. According to the U.S. Bureau of Diplomatic Security, Petty theft, pickpocketing, scams, and sexual harassment still occur although they are usually not violent and weapons are not involved. Chapter 6 Demographics Chapter 6 Section 1 Ethnicity and Languages As of September 2019, the population is 3,331,420, an annual increase of 177,020 people which represents a growth rate of 5.64%. The region covers 1,287.5 square kilometers. The population density is 408.18 slash km2, more than eight times that of the entire country. Dubai is the second most expensive city in the region and 20th most expensive city in the world. As of 2013, Only about 15% of the population of the emirate was made up of UAE nationals, with the rest comprising expatriates, many of whom either have been in the country for generations or were born in the UAE. Approximately 85% of the expatriate population was Asian, chiefly Indian and Pakistani, other significant Asian groups include Bangladeshis and Filipinos. 
a quarter of the population reportedly traces their origins to Iran. In addition, 16% of the population living in collective labor accommodation were not identified by ethnicity or nationality, but were thought to be primarily Asian. 461,000 Westerners live in the United Arab Emirates, making up 5.1% of its total population. There are over 100,000 British expatriates in Dubai, by far the largest group of Western expatriates in the city. The median age in the Emirate was about 27 years. In 2014, there were estimated to be 15.54 births and 1.99 deaths per 1,000 people. There are other Arab nationals, including GCC nationals. Arabic is the national and official language of the United Arab Emirates. The Gulf dialect of Arabic is spoken natively by the Emirati people. English is used as a second language. Other major languages spoken in Dubai due to immigration are Malayalam, Hindi Urdu, Gujarati, Persian, Sindhi, Tamil, Punjabi, Pashto, Bengali, Balochi, Tulu, Kannada, Singhala, Marathi, Telugu, Tagalog, and Chinese, in addition to many other languages. Chapter 6, Section 2, Religion Article 7 of the UAE's Provisional Constitution declares, Islam the official state religion of the UAE. The government subsidizes almost 95% of mosques and employs all imams, approximately 5% of mosques are entirely private, and several large mosques have large private endowments. All mosques in Dubai are managed by the Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department also known as Orkaf under the Government of Dubai, and all imams are appointed by the government. The Constitution of the United Arab Emirates provides for freedom of religion. Expats held preaching religious hatred or promoting religious extremism are usually jailed, and deported. Dubai has large Christian, Hindu, Sikh, Baha'i, Buddhist and other religious communities residing in the city, as well as a small but growing Jewish community. Non Muslim groups can own their own houses of worship, where they can practice their religion freely, by requesting a land grant and permission to build a compound. Groups that do not have their own buildings are allowed to use the facilities of other religious organizations or worship in private homes. Non-Muslim religious groups are also permitted to advertise group functions openly and distribute various religious literature. Catholics are served pastorally by the Apostolic Vicariate of Southern Arabia. British preacher Rev. Andrew Thompson claimed that the United Arab Emirates is one of the most tolerant places in the world towards Christians and that it is easier to be a Christian in the UAE than in the UK. On 5 April 2020, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints announced the building of one of their temples in Dubai. As part of the announcement, Church President Russell M. Nelson said that the plan for a temple in Dubai comes in response to their gracious invitation, which we gratefully acknowledge. Chapter 7, Economy One of the world's fastest-growing economies, Dubai's gross domestic product is projected at 107.1 billion US dollars with a growth rate of 6.1% in 2014. Although a number of core elements of Dubai's trading infrastructure were built on the back of the oil industry, revenues from oil and natural gas account for less than 5% of the Emirates' revenues. It is estimated that Dubai produces 50,000 to 70,000 barrels of oil a day and substantial quantities of gas from offshore fields. The Emirates' share in the UAE's total gas revenues is about 2%. Dubai's oil reserves have diminished significantly and are expected to be exhausted in 20 years. Real estate and construction, trade, entrepot and financial services are the largest contributors to Dubai's economy. Dubai's non-oil foreign trade stood at $362 billion in 2014. Of the overall trade volumes, Imports had the biggest share with a value of $230 billion while exports and re-exports to the Emirates stood at $31 billion and $101 billion respectively. By 2014, China had emerged as Dubai's largest international trading partner, with a total of $47.7 billion in trade flows, up 29% from 2013. 
India was second among Dubai's key trading partners with a trade of $29.7 billion, followed by the United States at $22.62 billion. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was Dubai's fourth trading partner globally and first in the GCC and Arab world with a total trade value of $14.2 billion. Trade with Germany in 2014 totaled $12.3 billion, Switzerland and Japan both at $11.72 billion and UK trade totaled $10.9 billion. Historically, Dubai and its twin across Dubai Creek, Dara, were important ports of call for Western manufacturers. Most of the new city's banking and financial centers were headquartered in the port area. Dubai maintained its importance as a trade route through the 1970s and 1980s. Dubai has a free trade in gold and, until the 1990s, was the hub of a brisk smuggling trade of gold ingots to India, where gold import was restricted. Dubai's Jebel Ali port, constructed in the 1970s, has the largest man-made harbor in the world and was ranked seventh globally for the volume of container traffic it supports. Dubai is also a hub for service industries such as information technology and finance, with industry-specific free zones throughout the city. Dubai Internet City, combined with Dubai Media City as part of TICOM, is one such enclave, whose members include IT firms such as Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HP Incorporated, Google, EMC Corporation, Oracle Corporation, Microsoft, Dell and IBM, and media organizations such as NBC, CNN, BBC, Reuters, Sky News and AP. Various programs, resources and value-added services support the growth of startups in Dubai and help them connect to new business opportunities. The government's decision to diversify from a trade-based, oil-reliant economy to one that is service and tourism-oriented made property more valuable, resulting in the property appreciation from 2004 to 2006. A longer-term assessment of Dubai's property market, however, showed depreciation, some properties lost as much as 64% of their value from 2001 to November 2008. The large-scale real estate development projects have led to the construction of some of the tallest skyscrapers and largest projects in the world such as the Emirates Towers, the Burj Khalifa, the Palm Islands and the most expensive hotel, the Burj Al Arab. Dubai's property market experienced a major downturn in 2008 and 2009 as a result of the slowing economic climate. By early 2009, the situation had worsened with the Great Recession taking a heavy toll on property values, construction and employment. This has had a major impact on property investors in the region, some of whom were unable to release funds from investments made in property developments. As of February 2009, Dubai's foreign debt was estimated at $80 billion, although this is a tiny fraction of the sovereign debt worldwide. The Dubai financial market was established in March 2000 as a secondary market for trading securities and bonds, both local and foreign. As of the fourth quarter 2006, its trading volume stood at about 400 billion shares, worth $95 billion in total. The DFM had a market capitalization of about $87 billion. The other Dubai-based stock exchange is Nasdaq Dubai, which is the international stock exchange in the Middle East. It enables a range of companies, including UAE and regional small and medium-sized enterprises, to trade on an exchange with an international brand name, with access by both regional and international investors. DMCC was established in 2002. It's the world's fastest growing free zone and been nominated as Global Free Zone of the Year 2016 by the Financial Times magazine. Dubai is also known as the city of gold because a major part of the economy is based on gold trades, with Dubai's total gold trading volumes in H1 2011 reaching 580 tons, with an average price of $1,455 per troy ounce. A city mayor's survey ranked Dubai 44th among the world's best financial cities in 2007, while another report by city mayors indicated that Dubai was the world's 27th richest city in 2012, 
in terms of purchasing power parity. Dubai is also an international financial center and has been ranked 37th within the top 50 global financial cities as surveyed by the MasterCard Worldwide Centers of Commerce Index, and first within the Middle East. Since it opened in September 2004, the Dubai IFC has attracted, as a regional hub, leading international firms and set up the Nasdaq Dubai which lists equity, derivatives, structured products Islamic bonds and other bonds. The Dubai AFC model is an independent risk-based regulator with a legislative system consistent with English common law. In 2012, the Global City Competitiveness Index by the Economist Intelligence Unit ranked Dubai at number 40 with a total score of 55.9. According to its 2013 research report on the future competitiveness of cities, in 2025, Dubai will have moved up to 23rd place overall in the index. Indians followed by Britons and Pakistanis are the top foreign investors in Dubai Realty. Dubai has launched several major projects to support its economy and develop different sectors. These include Dubai Fashion 2020 and Dubai Design District, expected to become a home to leading local and international designers. The 4 billion Emirati dirhams first phase of the project was completed in 2015. In September 2019, Dubai's ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum ordered to establish the higher committee for real estate planning to study and evaluate future real estate construction projects, in order to achieve a balance between supply and demand, which is seen as a move to curb the pace of construction projects following property prices fall. Since the economy of Dubai relies majorly on real estate, transportation, and tourism, it was highly exposed to the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. In April 2020, the American business and financial services company, Moody's Corporation reported that the coronavirus outbreak is likely to pose acute negative growth and fiscal implications in Dubai. It was reported that in order to bolster its finances and overcome the impact of coronavirus on its economy, Dubai was in talks to raise billions of dollars of debt privately, where it was seeking loans of 1 billion dirhams to 2 billion dirhams from each lender. On the 6th of May, Dubai's businessman from the hospitality sector, Khalaf al Haptor, stated that the coronavirus pandemic left the economy and his companies bleeding. The owner of seven hotels in the country, including the Waldorf Astoria on the man made island Palm Jumeirah, Haptor stated that Dubai's economy cannot afford to wait for the vaccine before resuming the major activities. In June 2020, the Moody's Investors Service cut down its ratings for eight of the biggest banks based in the UAE from stable to negative. In effect, the benchmark stock index of Dubai dropped the most among all the Gulf nations, where the DFM General Index lost as much as 1.3% in July 2020, a report released by an NGO, SwissAid, denounced the gold trade between Dubai and Switzerland. The documents revealed that Dubai firms, including Kalati Jewelry International Group and Trust One Financial Services, have been obtaining gold from poor African countries like Sudan. Between 2012 and 2018, 95% of gold from Sudan ended up in the UAE. The gold imported from Sudan by Kalati was from the mines controlled by militias responsible for war crimes and human rights violations in the country. World's largest refinery in Switzerland, Volcombe, was denounced by SwissAid for importing extensive gold from these Dubai firms. In 2018 and 2019, Volcombe received 83 tons of gold from the two companies. In a letter on the 11th of October 2021, the Switzerland State Secretariat for Economic Affairs asked the country's gold refineries to keep a strict check on the imports from the Emirates to ensure no involvement of illicit African bullion. Switzerland accounted for high volume of imports from the UAE, which were to be 10% of the total Swiss gold imports in 2021. The refineries were required to identify the country of origin of all gold that came from the UAE. Chapter 7 Section 1 Tourism and Retail Tourism is an important part of the Dubai government's strategy to maintain the flow of foreign cash into the Emirate. Dubai's lure for tourists is based mainly on shopping, but also on its possession of other ancient and modern attractions. As of 2018, 
Dubai is the fourth most visited city in the world based on the number of international visitors and the fastest growing, increasing by a 10.7% rate. The city hosted 14.9 million overnight visitors in 2016, and is expected to reach 20 million tourists by 2000. A great tourist attraction in Dubai is the Burj Khalifa, currently the tallest building on earth. Although, Jeddah Tower in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, is aiming to be taller. Dubai has been called the shopping capital of the Middle East. Dubai alone has more than 70 shopping centers, including the world's largest shopping center, Dubai Mall. Dubai is also known for the historical souk districts located on either side of its creek. Traditionally, Dows from East Asia, China, Sri Lanka, and India would discharge their cargo and the goods would be bargained over in the souks adjacent to the docks. Dubai Creek played a vital role in sustaining the life of the community in the city and was the resource which originally drove the economic boom in Dubai. As of September 2013, Dubai Creek has been proposed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Many boutiques and jewelry stores are also found in the city. Dubai is also referred to as the City of Gold as the Gold Souk in Dera houses nearly 250 gold retail shops. Dubai Creek Park in Dubai Creek also plays a vital role in Dubai tourism as it showcases some of the most famous tourist attractions in Dubai such as Dolphinarium, Cable Car, Camel Ride, Horse Carriage, and Exotic Birds, shows. Dubai has a wide range of parks like Safa Park, Mushreef Park, Hamria Park, etc. Each park is uniquely distinct from the other. Mushreef Park showcases different houses around the world. A visitor can check out the architectural features of the outside as well as the inside of each house. Some of the most popular beaches in Dubai are Um Sukhaim Beach, Al Mamzar Beach Park, JBR Open Beach, Kite Beach, Black Palace Beach, and Royal Island Beach Club. Mastercard's Global Destination Cities Index 2019 found that tourists spend more in Dubai than in any other country. In 2018, the country topped the list for the fourth year in a row with a total spend of $30.82 billion. The average spend per day was found to be $553. In October 2019, Dubai loosened its liquor laws for the first time under which it allowed tourists to purchase alcohol from state-controlled stores. Previously, alcohol was accessible only for locals with special licenses. The crucial policy shift came as the United Arab Emirates witnessed a severe economic crisis that led to a drop in alcohol sales by volume. Chapter 7 Section 2, Expo 2020 On the 2nd of November 2011, Four cities had their bids for Expo 2020 already lodged, with Dubai making a last-minute entry. The delegation from the Bureau International Day Expositions, which visited Dubai in February 2013 to examine the Emirates' readiness for the largest exposition, was impressed by the infrastructure and the level of national support. In May 2013, Dubai Expo 2020 Master Plan was revealed. Dubai then won the right to host Expo 2020 on the 27th of November 2013. The main site of Dubai Expo 2020 was planned to be a 438 hectare area, part of the new Dubai Trade Center Jebel Ali Urban Development, located midway between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Moreover, the Expo 2020 also created various social enlistment projects and monetary boons to the city targeting the year 2020 such as initiating the world's largest solar power project. The Dubai Expo 2020 was scheduled to take place from 20 October 2020 until 10 April 2021 for 173 days where there would be 192 country pavilions featuring narratives from every part of the globe. Have different thematic districts that would promote learning the wildlife in the forest exhibit too many other experiences. Due to the impact of COVID-19 the organizers of Expo 2020 postponed the Expo by one year to begin in 2021. Dubai has targets to build an inclusive, barrier-free and disabled-friendly city. The city has already brought in changes by introducing wheelchair-friendly taxis, 
pavements with slopes and tactile indicators on the floor for the visually impaired at all the metro stations. Chapter 8, Architecture Dubai has a rich collection of buildings and structures of various architectural styles. Many modern interpretations of Islamic architecture can be found here, due to a boom in construction and architectural innovation in the Arab world in general, and in Dubai in particular, supported not only by top Arab or international architectural and engineering design firms such as Al Hoshemi and Idas, but also by top firms of New York and Chicago. As a result of this boom, modern Islamic and world architecture has literally been taken to new levels in skyscraper building design and technology. Dubai now has more completed or topped out skyscrapers higher than two thirds of a kilometer, one third of a kilometer, or one quarter of a kilometer than any other city. A culmination point was reached in 2010 with the completion of the Burj Khalifa, now by far the world's tallest building at 829.8 meters. The Burj Khalifa's design is derived from the patterning systems embodied in Islamic architecture, with the triple-lobed footprint of the building based on an abstracted version of the desert flower Hymenocallis which is native to the Dubai region. The completion of the Khalifa Tower, following the construction boom that began in the 1980s, accelerated in the 1990s, and took on a rapid pace of construction during the decade of the 2000s, leaves Dubai with the world's tallest skyline as of 4 January 2010. At the top, Burj Khalifa, the world's second-highest observatory deck after the Shanghai Tower with an outdoor terrace is one of Dubai's most popular tourist attractions, with over 1.87 million visitors in 2013. Chapter 8 Section 1, Burj Al Arab The Burj Al Arab, a luxury hotel, is frequently described as the world's only seven-star, though its management has never made that claim but has claimed to be a five-star deluxe property. The term seven-star hotel was coined by a British journalist to describe their initial experience of the hotel. A Jamira Group spokesperson is quoted as saying, there's not a lot we can do to stop it. We're not encouraging the use of the term. We've never used it in our advertising. The hotel opened in December 1999. Chapter 8 Section 2, Burj Khalifa Burj Khalifa, known as the Burj Dubai before its inauguration, is a 828 meters high skyscraper in Dubai, and the tallest building in the world. The tower was inspired by the structure of the desert flower Hymena Callis. It was constructed by more than 30 contracting companies around the world with workers of a hundred nationalities. It is an architectural icon. The building opened on 4 January 2010. Chapter 8 Section 3, Palm Jumeirah The Palm Jumeirah is an artificial archipelago, created using land reclamation by Nakheel, a company owned by the Dubai government, and designed and developed by Hellman Hurley Charvet Peacock Slash Architects Incorporated. It is one of three planned islands called the Palm Islands which extend into the Persian Gulf. The Palm Jumeirah is the smallest and the original of three Palm Islands, and it is located on the Jumeirah coastal area of Dubai. It was built between 2001 and 2006. Chapter 8 Section 4 the World Islands. The World Islands is an archipelago of small artificial islands constructed in the shape of a world map, located in the waters of the Persian Gulf, 4.0 kilometers off the coast of Dubai, United Arab Emirates. The World Islands are composed mainly of sand dredged from Dubai's shallow coastal waters, and are one of several artificial island developments in Dubai. Chapter 8 Section 5 Dubai Miracle Garden. On the 14th of February 2013, the Dubai Miracle Garden, a 72,000 meter flower garden, opened in Dubailand. It is the world's largest flower garden. The garden displays more than 50 million flowers with more than 70 species of flowering plants. The garden uses retreated wastewater from city's municipality, and utilizes drip irrigation method for watering the plants. 
During the summer seasons from late May to September when the climate can get extremely hot with an average high of about 40 degrees Celsius, the garden stays closed. Chapter 8 Section 6, Dubai Marina Dubai Marina is a district in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. It is an artificial canal city, built along a 3-kilometer stretch of Persian Gulf shoreline. As of 2018, it has a population of 55,052. Chapter 8 Section 7, Address Beach Resort and Address Beach Residences The structure is a set of two towers connected at the bottom and with a sky bridge at the top which connects the 63rd through to the 77th levels. The sky bridge houses luxury apartments on the world's highest occupiable sky bridge floor, at 294.36 meters. Known as Jumeirah Gate, it opened in December 2020 and is situated along the beach. The towers have the world's highest infinity pool in a building, on the roof, at a height of 293.906 meters. Chapter 9, Transportation Transport in Dubai is controlled by the Roads and Transport Authority, an agency of the Government of Dubai, formed by Royal Decree in 2005. The public transport network, has in the past faced congestion and reliability issues which a large investment program has addressed, including over 70 billion Emirati dirhams of improvements planned for completion by 2020, when the population of the city is projected to exceed 3.5 million. In 2009, according to Dubai municipality statistics, there were an estimated 1,021,880 cars in Dubai. In January 2010, the number of Dubai residents who use public transport stood at 6%. Chapter 9 Section 1, Road Five main routes, E11, E311, E44, E77 and E66, run through Dubai, connecting the city to other towns and emirates. Additionally, several important intra-city routes, such as D89, D85, D75, D73, D94 and D92 connect the various localities in the city. The eastern and western sections of the city are connected by Al Mokchum Bridge, Al Gahud Bridge, Al Shindiga Tunnel, Business Bay Crossing, and Floating Bridge. The public bus transport system in Dubai is run by the RTA. The bus system services 140 routes and transported over 109 million people in 2008. By the end of 2010, there will be 2,100 buses in service across the city. In 2006, the Transport Authority announced the construction of 500 air-conditioned passenger bus shelters, and planned for 1,000 more across the Emirates in a move to encourage the use of public buses. All taxi services are licensed by the RTA. Dubai licensed taxis are easily identifiable by their cream bodywork color and varied roof colors identifying the operator. Dubai Taxi Corporation, a division of the RTA, is the largest operator and has taxis with red roofs. There are five private operators, Metro Taxis, Network Taxis, Cars Taxis, Arabia Taxis, and City Taxis. In addition, there is a ladies and families taxi service with female drivers, which caters exclusively for women and children. There are more than 3,000 taxis operating within the Emirate making an average of 192,000 trips every day, carrying about 385,000 persons. In 2009 taxi trips exceeded 70 million trips serving around 140.45 million passengers. Chapter 9 Section 2, Air Dubai International Airport, the hub for Emirates, serves the city of Dubai and other Emirates in the country. The airport is the third busiest airport in the world by passenger traffic and the world's busiest airport by international passenger traffic. In addition to being an important passenger traffic hub, the airport is the sixth busiest cargo airport in world, handling 2.37 million tons of cargo in 2014. Emirates is the national airline of Dubai. As of 2018, 
It operated internationally serving over 150 destinations in over 70 countries across six continents. The development of Almoctum International Airport was announced in 2004. The first phase of the airport, featuring one A380 capable runway, 64 remote stands, one cargo terminal with an annual capacity for 250,000 tons of cargo and a passenger terminal building designed to accommodate 5 million passengers per year, has been opened. When completed, Dubai World Central Al Mokhum International will be the largest airport in the world with five runways, four terminal buildings and capacity for 160 million passengers and 12 million tons of cargo. Chapter 9 Section 3 Metro Rail Dubai Metro consists of two lines which run through the financial and residential areas of the city. It was opened in September 2009. UK-based international service company Serco is responsible for operating the Metro. The red line as of 2020, which has 29 stations running from Rashidia Station to UAE Exchange Station in Jebel Ali, is the major backbone line. The green line, running from the Etisalot station to the Creek station, has 20 stations. An extension to the red line connecting the Expo 2020 site opened on June 1, 2021. A blue and a purple line have also been planned. The Dubai Metro is the first urban train network in the Arabian Peninsula. The trains are fully automated and driverless. Chapter 9 Section 4 Palm Jumeirah Monorail A monorail line connecting the Palm Jumeirah to the mainland opened on 30 April 2009. It is the first monorail in the Middle East. An extension to connect to the red line of the Dubai Metro is planned. Chapter 9 Section 5 Tram A tramway located in Al Sufau will run for 14.5 km along El Sufau Road from Dubai Marina to the Burj Al Arab and the Mall of the Emirates with two interchanges with Dubai Metro's red line. The first section, a 10.6 km long tram line which serves 11 stations, was opened in 2014. Chapter 9 Section 6 – High Speed Rail Dubai has announced it will complete a link of the UAE high-speed rail system which will eventually hook up with the whole GCC and then possibly Europe. The high-speed rail will serve passengers and cargo. Chapter 9 Section 7 – Waterways There are two major commercial ports in Dubai, Port Rashid, and Port Jebel Ali. Port Jebel Ali is the world's largest man-made harbour, the biggest port in the Middle East, and the seventh busiest port in the world. One of the more traditional methods of getting across Bur Dubai to Dera is by Obros, small boats that ferry passengers across the Dubai Creek, between Abra stations in Bastakia and Banyas Road. The Marine Transport Agency has also implemented the Dubai Water Bus System. Water Bus is a fully air-conditioned boat service across selected destinations across the creek. One can also avail oneself of the tourist water bus facility in Dubai. Latest addition to the water transport system is the water taxi. Dubai is increasingly activating its logistics and ports in order to participate in trade between Europe and China or Africa in addition to oil transport. For this purpose, ports such as Port of Jebel Ali or Mina Rashid are rapidly expanded and investments are made in their technology. The country is historically and currently, part of the Maritime Silk Road that runs from the Chinese coast, to the south via the southern tip of India to Mombasa, from there through the Red Sea via the Suez Canal to the Mediterranean, there to the upper Adriatic region to the northern Italian hub of Trieste with its rail connections to Central Europe, Eastern Europe and the North Sea. Chapter 10 – Culture The UAE culture mainly revolves around traditional Arab culture. The influence of Arab and Islamic culture on its architecture, music, attire, cuisine, and lifestyle is very prominent as well. Five times every day Muslims are called to prayer from the minarets of mosques that are scattered around the country. Since 2006, 
the weekend has been Friday and Saturday, as a compromise between Friday's holiness to Muslims and the Western weekend of Saturday and Sunday. Prior to 2006, the weekend was Thursday to Friday. Because of the touristic approach of many Dubites in the entrepreneurial sector and the high standard of living, Dubai's culture has gradually evolved towards one of luxury, opulence, and lavishness with a high regard for leisure-related extravagance. Annual entertainment events such as the Dubai Shopping Festival and Dubai Summer Surprises attract over 4 million visitors, from across the region and generate revenues in excess of $2.7 billion. Dubai is known for its nightlife. Clubs and bars are found mostly in hotels because of liquor laws. The New York Times described Dubai as the kind of city where you might run into Michael Jordan at the Buddha Bar or stumble across Naomi Campbell celebrating her birthday with a multi-day bash. The city's cultural imprint as a small, ethnically homogeneous pearling community was changed with the arrival of other ethnic groups and nationals, first by the Iranians in the early 1900s, and later by Indians and Pakistanis in the 1960s. In 2005, 84% of the population of metropolitan Dubai was foreign-born, about half of them from India. Major holidays in Dubai include Eid al-Fitr, which marks the end of Ramadan, and National Day, which marks the formation of the United Arab Emirates. The International Festivals and Events Association, the world's leading events trade association, has crowned Dubai as IFI World Festival and Event City, 2012 in the city's category with a population of more than 1 million. Large shopping malls in the city, such as Dera City Center, Murdiff City Center, Burjuman, Mall of the Emirates, Dubai Mall and Ibn Battuta Mall as well as traditional Dubai Gold Souk and other souks attract shoppers from the region. Chapter 10 Section 1 Cuisine Arabic cuisine is very popular and is available everywhere in the city, from the small shawarma diners in Dera and Al Karama to the restaurants in Dubai's hotels. Fast food, South Asian, and Chinese cuisines are also very popular and are widely available. The sale and consumption of pork is regulated and is sold only to non-Muslims, in designated areas of supermarkets and airports. Similarly, the sale of alcoholic beverages is regulated. A liquor permit is required to purchase alcohol, however, alcohol is available in bars and restaurants within hotels. Shisha and Kawa boutiques are also popular in Dubai. Biryani is also a popular cuisine across Dubai with being the most popular among Indians and Pakistanis present in Dubai. The inaugural Dubai Food Festival was held between 21 February to the 15th of March 2014. According to Vision magazine, the event was aimed at enhancing and celebrating Dubai's position as the gastronomic capital of the region. The festival was designed to showcase the variety of flavors and cuisines on offer in Dubai featuring the cuisines of over 200 nationalities at the festival. The next food festival was held between the 23rd of February 2017 to the 11th of March 2017. Chapter 10 Section 2 Entertainment Dubai Opera opened its door on the 31st of August 2016 in downtown Dubai with a performance by Plathido Domingo. The venue is a 2,000-seat, multifunctional performing arts center able to host not only theatrical shows, concerts and operas, but also weddings, gala dinners, banquets and conferences. Arabic movies are popular in Dubai, and the UAE. Since 2004, the city has hosted the annual Dubai International Film Festival which serves as a showcase for Arab and Middle Eastern film-making talent. The Dubai Desert Rock Festival was also another major festival consisting of heavy metal and rock artists but is no longer held in Dubai. One of the lesser-known sides of Dubai is the importance of its young contemporary art gallery scene. Since 2008, the leading contemporary art galleries such as Carbon 12 Dubai, Green Art, Gallery Isabel van den Eind, and the Third Line have brought the city onto the international art map. Art Dubai, the growing and reputable art fair of the region is as well a major contributor of the contemporary art scene's development. Chapter 10 Section 3 Media 
many international news agencies such as Reuters, APTN, Bloomberg LP and Middle East Broadcasting Center operate in Dubai Media City, and Dubai Internet City. Additionally, several local network television channels such as Dubai One, and Dubai TV provide programming in English and Arabic respectively. Dubai is also the headquarters for several print media outlets. Dar al Khalij, Al Bayan, and Al Ittihad are the city's largest circulating Arabic language newspapers, while Gulf News, Khalij Times, Khalij Mag, and Seven Days are the largest circulating English newspapers. Etisalot, the government owned telecommunications provider, held a virtual monopoly over telecommunication services in Dubai prior to the establishment of other, smaller telecommunications companies such as Emirates Integrated Telecommunications Company in 2006. Internet was introduced into the UAE in 1995. The network has an internet bandwidth of 7.5 gigabits per second with capacity of 49 SDM1 links. Dubai houses two of four domain name system data centers in the country. Censorship is common in Dubai and used by the government to control content that it believes violates the cultural and political sensitivities of Emirates. Homosexuality, drugs, and the theory of evolution are generally considered taboo. Internet content is regulated in Dubai. Etisalot uses a proxy server to filter internet content that the government deems to be inconsistent with the values of the country, such as sites that provide information on how to bypass the proxy, sites pertaining to dating, gay and lesbian networks, and pornography, and previously, sites originating from Israel. Emirates Media and Internet notes that as of 2002, 76% of Internet users are male. About 60% of Internet users were Asian, while 25% of users were Arab. Dubai enacted an electronic transactions and commerce law in 2002 which deals with digital signatures and electronic registers. It prohibits Internet service providers from disclosing information gathered in providing services. The Peel Code contains official provisions that prohibit digital access to pornography, however, it does not address cyber crime or data protection. Chapter 10 Section 4 Sports Football and cricket are the most popular sports in Dubai. Three football teams represent Dubai in UAE Pro League. Al Wasl have the second most championships in the UAE League, after Al Ain. Dubai also hosts both the annual Dubai Tennis Championships and the Legends Rock Dubai Tennis Tournaments, as well as the Dubai Desert Classic Golf Tournament and the DP World Tour Championship, all of which attract sports stars from around the world. The Dubai World Cup, a thoroughbred horse race, is held annually at the Maidon Racecourse. The city's top basketball team has traditionally been Shabab al Ali Basket. Dubai also hosts the traditional rugby union tournament Dubai Sevens, part of the Sevens World Series event pictures of Rugby Seven Dubai 2015. In 2009, Dubai hosted the 2009 Rugby World Cup Sevens. Auto racing is also a big sport in Dubai, the Dubai Autodrome is home to many auto racing events throughout the year. It also features a state-of-the-art indoor and outdoor kartrome, popular among racing enthusiasts and recreational riders. The Indian Premier League cricket competition was held in UAE in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Chapter 10 Section 5 Dress Code The Emirati attire is typical of several countries in the Arabian Peninsula. Women usually wear the abaya, a long black robe with a hijab. Some women may add in a cob which cover the mouth and nose and only leaves the eyes exposed. Men wear the kandura also referred to as dishdasha or even thorb and the headscarf. The UAE traditional gutre is white and is held in place by an accessory called eagle, which resembles a black cord. The younger Emiratis prefer to wear red and white gutra, 
and tie it around their head like a turban. The above dress code is never compulsory, and many people wear Western or other Eastern clothing without any problems, but prohibitions on wearing indecent clothing or revealing too much skin are aspects of the UAE to which Dubai's visitors are expected to conform, and are encoded in Dubai's criminal law. The UAE has enforced decency regulations in most public places, aside from water parks, beaches, clubs, and bars. Chapter 11, Education The school system in Dubai follows that of the United Arab Emirates. As of 2009, there are 79 public schools run by the Ministry of Education that serve Emiratis and expatriate Arab people as well as 207 private schools. The medium of instruction in public schools is Arabic with emphasis on English as a second language, while most of the private schools use English as their medium of instruction. Currently only the Swiss International Scientific School in Dubai claims to offer parallel streams in different languages, bilingual English slash French or English slash German. Most private schools cater to one or more expatriate communities. Some 36 schools offer an international education using the one or more of the four international baccalaureate programs for students aged 3 to 19. Currently, 15 schools have introduced the IB career related program that can be combined with a vocational qualification such as a BTEC. While there are more UK curriculum based schools in Dubai than any other, more students attend an Indian curriculum school which tend to be considerably larger, and lower cost. There are 34 Indian curriculum schools in the Emirate, most of which offer the CBSE, and just a handful the Indian Certificate of Secondary Education Indian Syllabus. Examples of Indian curriculum schools include IHS, DPS, DMHS. There are a small number of Pakistani schools offering FBI's curriculum for expatriate children in Dubai. A total of 18 schools offer British primary education up to the age of 11. There are 64 schools that offer a variation of a UK curriculum style secondary education, either a pure GCSE and A level offering, or increasingly I slash GCSE up to 16, and then the IB diploma post 16. Currently, no school in the UAE offers the choice of IB or A-level at 16, but several schools have said they will do in the future. British-style 11-18 to 18 secondary schools offering general certificate of secondary education and A-levels include Dubai GEM Private School, Dubai British School, English Language School Private Some schools, such as the American School of Dubai, also offer the curriculum of the United States. Dubai has a very active education regulator, the KHDA, which is best known for its school ratings, but actually has a wide mandate when it comes to school improvement in the Emirate. Its inspections truly matter, and there is no doubt that school quality has improved as a result of its implementation. A total of 17 schools are currently rated outstanding, and a further 40 rated very good. Parents in general rate schools highly. The most well known universities in Dubai are American University in Dubai. Hult International Business School, Al Ghuraya University, the American College of Dubai, University of Wollongong in Dubai, British University in Dubai, Murdoch University Dubai offering courses in business administration, engineering, architecture, and interior design. American University in Dubai is one of the six UAE universities featured in Q's World University Rankings 2014-2015. In 2013 Synergy University Dubai Campus opened its campus in Jumeirah Lakes Towers being a first university in Dubai to be located outside of educational zones. Chapter 12, Healthcare Healthcare in Dubai can be divided into two different sectors, public and private. Each emirate is able to dictate healthcare standards according to their internal laws, although the standards and regulations rarely have extreme differences. Public hospitals in Dubai were first built in the late 1950s and continued to grow with public health initiatives. There are now 28 hospitals in Dubai, 6 public and 22 private, with 3 more major hospitals scheduled to be built by 2025. By the end of 2012, there were also a total of 1,348 medical clinics, 97% of which are operated privately. In 2015, Dubai phased in mandatory health insurance for all inhabitants, 
thereby leading to increased demand for medical services. Chapter 13, Twin Towns, Sister Cities Dubai is twinned with